Hello, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for that lovely introduction. Um, yeah, I'm Alana Irving, and I build tools and structures for radical collaboration. And I'm here to talk to you today about collaborating with money. So I work in the social impact venture space where people are brought together by a desire to make a positive difference um, and by values like cooperation and connection and caring relationships. And in this space, I think sometimes money gets a bit of a bad rep. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, I think sometimes people feel like it doesn't represent those values. Right? It brings a lot of baggage with it from the individualistic, capitalist uh, society out there. Um, but I'm quite interested, yeah, like money can be uncomfortable. Um, but I'm interested in what can happen if we, if we stay with that discomfort instead of avoiding or shying away um, and start to unpack what is this money thing? Why is it so powerful? Uh, what could it be with a different set of values? Yeah, so I've been working um, on some projects um, around this alternative story about money and a different way of relating with a different set of values uh, that can help us build trust and build community and build commons together. And I'm going to tell you about three of them today. Right, so the first one I want to tell you about is called Co-Budget. Um, I started working on Co-Budget at Inspiral, which is a network of social entrepreneurs, a pretty a large group of people um, who does a lot with um, financial interdependence, so uh, pooling resources, sharing income, and we needed a way to involve a lot of different people in financial decision making and setting the budget. Um, so basically we developed this process of participatory budgeting. It started as uh, basically an ugly spreadsheet where I just put um, all the different contribu financial contributions from that month down the side and then across the top went the projects that people wanted funding for and people could come in and put their part of the budget toward the projects that they wanted to support. Um, and then it grew from this <laughs> ugly spreadsheet to a piece of um, open source software which is now used by different groups around the world, which is super exciting, um, including Edmund Hillary Fellowship, actually, which used co-budget to give budge, parts of the budget to the fellows who could then fund the projects that they wanted to support in the community. So what I've noticed about groups who use co-budget is just real just increase in engagement, um, a feeling of accessibility about the budget, um, and a shared sense of ownership of, hey, we can put our resources together and build things together um, and share ownership of those outcomes. Um, it's kind of like, yeah, like you could think of it as internal crowdfunding using shared resources. And so in this way, it can help a community build trust, uh, build, strengthen the community itself, um, and basically get, get things done together, build things together. So that's co-budget. The next thing I want to tell you about is Open Collective, which I've been working on more recently. Open Collective began out of uh, trying to solve a problem in the world of open source software. Basically, these distributed collaborative communities come together to produce open source software, which is really valuable and, and does really important things. And people come to rely on this software, build businesses on top of it. Um, and there's ways to contribute code back, but there really was no way to contribute money to financially support these projects and help them be more sustainable uh, or get to the next level. And that's because, um, kind of by definition, a distributed collaboration it, nobody owns it. It doesn't have one person's name on it. It doesn't have a, a company that can have a bank account or issue a receipt or um, generate an invoice, which you sort of need to interact financially in the world. Um, so Open Collective um, solved this problem through a, essentially like a, a hack of fiscal sponsorship where a project can come along, start an Open Collective page, uh, which is... It, kind of looks like a crowdfunding page. So this is who we are, this is what we build, um, it has a donate button, um, and yeah, it can accept funds and start spending money. And uh, importantly, this is all completely transparent, so you, everybody can see where the money comes from and also where the money goes and what it's spent on, and it can be accountable to the community at large. Um, and the way this is accomplished, um, like I said about fiscal sponsorship, is there's an umbrella organization sort of in the background, which is legally incorporated, has a bank account, can hire an accountant and pay taxes and all that stuff. Um, and then under that umbrella, all of these collectives can live and basically um, use that like a legal and financial commons. 
Um, like, so here are some of the projects. Um, it's grown now beyond um, open source software to lots of different kinds of projects. And sort of any organization can um, start one of these umbrella organizations and create a legal and financial commons for the collectives that they want to support, for the community that they want to host. Um, so to make this a little bit more concrete, um, an example, Women Who Code um, has a mission around supporting women in programming. And so they have their Women Who Code organization, which is legally incorporated and has a bank account and they have an accountant and everything. And then all of the Women Who Code chapters, so they've got chapters in cities around the world, can have their, can have their own open collective page, their own transparent budget, can fundraise in their community, um, can, you can host events through Open Collective and the ticket sales go to the budget as well. It's all transparent. Um, and that way they can also support their community members to do cool stuff like, you know, buy a 3D printer for the community to hack on or pay for childcare at the events so that more people can attend. Um, and there are now um, a whole network, sort of federated network of these op Open Collective umbrella organizations that support different communities um, and each host number of collectives. Um, and in this way, it's another way that collaborating with money can help us um, build things together, build trust, um, and strengthen our community. So now we are about to cross a threshold. We have been in the white background world of the current uh, internet that we have today, and we're about to step over into the decentralized web, the crypto-powered web, a Web3, whatever you want to call it. So of course we need to have a black background and monospace font, because this is a hacker zone. <laughs> but I'd like to tell you about my latest project, which is called Dark Crystal. So Dark Crystal really emerged um, out of a question, which is who gets to be a peer in peer-to-peer? Um, I think that the decentralized web is the emerging future. It's really important, it's really powerful, and so it's really important that everybody gets to participate. But when you look at the demographics of, okay, who builds peer-to-peer -peer technology and who has cryptocurrency, uh, unfortunately, a lot of people look the same or come from a similar background, and, and other people are not able to access, access this world. So we are interested in why that might be, what are the barriers that, that people face, or what might be putting them off. So. Uh, my co-founder on this project, uh, Dark Crystal, decided to just give Bitcoin to 50 of his diverse friends to understand um, how it was for them, what their experience was, what challenges they faced. So these are people who otherwise would never have gotten involved with cryptocurrency. And we learned a lot from this experience. Um, and one of the strongest themes that emerged was around private key management. So essentially, passwords, secrets. Um, the cool thing about peer-to-peer -peer systems is you connect directly with the people that you want to interact with. Um, there is no bank or a company or um, you know, a centralized server in between, in between you intermediating your relationship. The hard thing about P2P -P systems is there, there is no bank in the middle that you can't walk in there and say, hey, I lost my password, can you please let me back into my account? You are responsible for your own security. So combining like anxiety around technology for people who aren't necessarily tech people, anxiety around money, plus this like really unforgiving security environment, um, yeah, really was putting a lot of people off. So we thought, okay, can we build a better way? The way that Dark Crystal works, <laughs> essentially, is you take your secret, so a password, or it could actually be any kind of secret, put it in your crystal, and then through the magic of math and cryptography, you split your crystal into pieces, into crystal shards. Each of those crystal shards is unreadable. It doesn't tell you anything about the secret on its own. Um, and you can take your crystal shards and uh, give them to people that you trust. So give one to your coworker, and one to your mom, and one to your neighbor, and say, hey, can you please keep this safe for me? And then if something happens to you or you lose your password, those people who you trust can use their judgment and say, oh, yep, this is a legit request. We're going to put our shards back together uh, and reveal the secret. Yeah. So um, the, un the underlying uh, technology of Dark Crystal isn't new. Um, but the, this approach of uh, backing up secrets using the trust, trust in your social network, and the way we're going about it is new. So first of all, um, the, the technology that exists around this na uh, now, up to now, before we built our prototype, is really hard to use. I mean, like, we do this stuff for a living, and we were trying to do this sharding process, and it's so error-prone and unwieldy, and we just thought there must be a better way. So we've built Dark Crystal to be super accessible, user-friendly, 
uh, yeah, really a lot less error prone, a lot easier to use. Um, and it's also built with a community first mindset. This technology up to now has been used uh, in really, I would say, individualistic ways. So for example, people uh, enhancing their own security by splitting up their password in different places so that if somebody breaks in, they can't, can't get the whole thing. Um, but I think bringing this community mindset to the technology really starts to influence a different way of building it. The other thing that makes Dark Crystal new and different and cool is it's fully P2P. Um, so it's built using the secure Scuttlebutt protocol, and I don't have time to completely get into this. Um, but really briefly, Scuttlebutt is maritime slang for gossip. And the way that a gossip protocol works is you've got your device, you have your data, um, and if you come into contact on the same network with somebody who you're connected to or you're friends with, your devices gossip with each other and say, hey, do you have any news about our mutual friends? Like, what's going on with that thing I'm interested in? And if they have any updates, they share it with you and you share updates with them, and then you can go on to meet somebody else and pass on the information that you learned. And in this way, information and data can spread and people can be connected without any central server or a company in between them. So yeah, that's why it's fully P2P. So Dark Crystal is built on this protocol. There are actually a number of apps built on this protocol, uh, which is really designed, um, I would say, humanistically. It's designed to mirror the way that human relationships actually work um, as a way to enhance trust and enhance community. Uh, so I think that... Um, we can reimagine what money can be, build different kinds of tools with a different set of values in mind uh, to enhance trust, to build our relationships, and to start to build the world that we want to see and the world that we really want to live in. Thank you very much.